Autolite and its 98,000 dealers bring you Richard Widmark, Kathy Lewis, and Elliot Lewis in tonight's presentation of Suspense. Tonight, Autolite presents part two of the first radio dramatization of William Shakespeare's tragic history of love and death, Othello. Our stars, Richard Widmark, Kathy Lewis, and Elliot Lewis. Hi, Harlow. Doing some gardening? Yes, sir, Hap. And here's my favorite plant. Well, that's an Autolite Stay Full battery. Sure. The power plant for quick, dependable starts. And unlike other plants, this one needs water only three times a year in normal car use. Oh, it's a daisy, Harlow. And fern away the best battery blooming. It never gets bushed, eh, Harlow? <laughs> right. The Autolite Stay Full is tougher than a cactus. Fiberglass retaining mats protect every positive plate to reduce shedding and flaking and give that famous battery longer life, as proved by tests conducted according to accepted life cycle standards. So, visit your Autolite battery dealer, the expert who services all makes of batteries. To locate him quickly, phone Western Union by number and ask for Operator 25. I'll gladly tell you the name of your nearest Autolite battery dealer, where you can get an Autolite stay full, the battery that needs water only three times a year in normal car use. And remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite presents transcribed part two of William Shakespeare's Othello, starring Richard Widmark as Iago, Kathy Lewis as Desdemona, and Elliot Lewis as the Moor, hoping once again to keep you in suspense. The scene is Cyprus. Othello has returned triumphant from the wars, now to govern the island with his wife, Desdemona. The ensign, Iago, jealous of the position held by Cassio, lieutenant to Othello, plots revenge on both Cassio and the Moor, whom he hates. Two things are to be done. My wife, Amelia, must move for Cassio to her mistress, Desdemona. I'll set her on. Myself the while to draw the moor apart and bring him jump when he may Cassio find soliciting his wife. Aye, that's the way. Dull not device by coldness and delay. In happy time, Iago. You have not been to bed then, Cassio? Why, no, the day it broke before we parted. I've made bold, Iago, to send in to your wife... My suit to her is that she will, to virtuous Desdemona, procure me some access. And I'll devise a mean to draw the moor out of the way, that your converse and business may be more free. I humbly thank you for it. I never knew a Florentine more kind and honest. Good morrow, good lieutenant. I'm sorry for your displeasure, but all will sure be well. Pray you come in. I will bestow you where you shall have time to speak your bosom freely. I am much bound to you. Be assured, good Cassio, I will do all my abilities in your behalf. Bounteous, madam, whatever shall become of Michael Cassio, he's never anything but your true servant. Oh, sir, I thank you. Before Amelia here, I give you warrant of your place. Be assured, if I do vow a friendship, I'll perform it to the last article. My lord shall never rest. I'll intermingle everything he does with Cassio's suit. Therefore, be merry, Cassio, for I should rather die than give your cause away. Madam, here comes my lord. Oh, madam, I'll take my leave. Why stay and hear me speak? Madam, not now. I'm very ill at ease, unfit for mine own purpose. I'll do your discretion. Ah, I like not that. What do you say? Nothing, my lord. Or if I... I know not what. Was not that Cassio parted from my wife? Cassio, my lord? No, sure, I cannot think it that he would sneak away so guilty like seeing you coming. I do believe to see. How now, my lord? 
I have been talking with a suitor here, a man that languishes in your displeasure. Who is it you mean? Why, your Lieutenant Cassio. Good, my lord, if I have any grace or power to move you, I pray you call him back. Went he hence now? Yes, faith so humble that he has left part of his griefs with me. I suffer with him. Good love, call him back. Not now, sweet Desdemona. Some other time. But shall be shortly. The sooner sweet for you. Shall be tonight for supper. No, not tonight. Tomorrow dinner, then. I shall not dine at home. I meet the captains at the Citadel. Why, then, tomorrow night or Tuesday morn, on Tuesday morn or night or Wednesday morn. Name the time, but let it not exceed three days. In faith, he's penitent. When shall he come? Tell me, Othello. No more. Let him come when he will. I will deny you nothing. Whereon I do beseech you grant me this to leave me but a little to myself. Shall I deny you? No. Farewell, my lord. Farewell, my Desdemona. I'll come to thee straight. Emilia, come. Perdition catch my soul, but I do love thee. And when I love thee not, chaos is come again. My noble lord... What do you say, Iago? Did Michael Cassio, when you wooed my lady, know of your love? He did from first to last. Why do you ask? But for a satisfaction of my thoughts, no further harm. Why of your thought, Iago? I did not think he had been acquainted with her. Oh, yes, and went between us very often. Indeed. Indeed. I indeed. Do you discern aught in that? Is he not honest? Honest, my lord? Honest, aye, honest. My lord, for aught I know. What do you think? Think, my lord. Think, my lord. Why, heaven, he echoes me. As if there was some monster in his thought too hideous to be shown. You meant something, I heard you say, but now. You liked not that when Cassio left my wife. What did you not like? If you do love me, show me thy thought. My lord, you know I love you. I think you do. And for I know you are full of love and honesty and weigh your words before you give them breath. Therefore, these stops of yours fright me the more. For Michael Cassio, I dare be sworn, I think that he is honest. I think so, too. Men should be what they seem. Certain men should be what they seem. Why, then I think Cassio's an honest man. Nay, yet there's more in this. I prithee speak to me as to thy thinking. Good, my lord, pardon me. Though I am bound to every act of duty, I am not bound to that all slaves are free to. Utter my thoughts... Why, you say they are vile and false. You conspire against your friend, Iago, if you but think him wronged and make his ear a stranger to your thoughts. It were not for your quiet nor your good, nor for my manhood, honesty, or wisdom to let you know my thoughts. By heaven, I'll know your thought. Oh, beware, my lord, of jealousy. It is the green-eyed monster which doth mock that meat it feeds on. Why? Why is this? Do you think I'd make a life of jealousy? No, Iago. I see before I doubt... When I doubt, prove, and on the proof, there is no more but this. Away at once with love or jealousy. I am glad of it. For now I shall have reason to show the love and duty that I bear you with franker spirit. Therefore, as I am bound, receive it from me. Look to your wife. Observe her well with Cassio. Wear your eye thus, not jealous nor secure. I would not have your free and noble nature out of self-bounty be abused. Look to it. Do you say so? She did deceive her father, marrying you. And when she seemed to shake and fear your looks, she loved them most. And so she did. I see this hath a little dashed your spirits. Not a jot. Not, not a jot. If faith, I fear it has. I hope you will consider what is spoke comes from my love. But I do see your mood. I pray you not to strain my speech to grosser issues, nor to larger reach than to suspicion. I will not. Should you do so, my lord, my speech should fall into such vile success as my thoughts aim not at. Cassio is my worthy friend. My lord, I see you are moved. No, not much moved. I do not think what Desdemona is honest. Long live she so. And long live you to think so. Farewell. If you do perceive more... Let me know more. Set your wife, Amelia, to observe. Leave me, Iago. My lord, I take my leave. If she be false, <laughs> oh, then heaven mocks itself. I'll not believe it. How now, my dear Othello, your dinner and the generous islanders by you invited to attend your presence? I am to blame. Why is your speech so faint? Are you not well? I have a pain upon my forehead here. 
faith that's with watching till away again. Let me but bind your head. Within this hour, it will be well again. Your handkerchief is too little. Othello puts the handkerchief from him, and Desdemona unwittingly drops it. Come, I'll go in with you. I am very sorry that you are not well. They exit, leaving Amelia alone in the garden. I'm glad I have found this handkerchief. This was her first remembrance from the moor. In recent days, my wayward husband has a hundred times wooed me to steal it. But she so loves the token, for a fellow conjured her she should ever keep it, that she reserves it evermore about her to kiss and talk to. How now? What do you hear alone? Do not you chide. I have a thing for you. A thing for me? What will you give me now for that same handkerchief? What handkerchief? What handkerchief? Why, that the Moor first gave to Desdemona. That which so often you did bid me steal? Has stolen it from her? No, Faith. She let it drop by negligence, and to the advantage I being here took it up. Look, here it is. A good wench. Give it me. What will you do with it that you have been so earnest to have me filch it? Why, what's that to you? If it be not for some purpose of import, give it me again. Poor lady, she'll run mad when she shall lack it. I have use for it. Go, leave me. I will in Cassio's lodging lose this handkerchief and let him find it. Trifles light as air are to the jealous confirmation strong as proofs of holy writ. This may do something. The moor already changes with my poison. I did say so. Look where he comes. Uh, ah, false to me. To me. Why, how now, General? No more of that. Be gone. You've set me on the rack. I swear it is better to be much abused than but to know a little. I am sorry to hear this. Villain. Be sure thou prove my lover, strumpet. Be sure of it. Give me the ocular proof. Or by the worth of man's eternal soul, you'd better have been born a dog than answer my weight wrath. Just come to this. Make me to see it. I'll have some proof. I'll not endure it. I see, sir, you are eaten up with passion. I do repent me that I put it to you. You would be satisfied... Would nay, I will. Give me a living reason. She's disloyal. I do not like the office. But since I am entered into this cause so far, pricked to it by foolish honesty and love... I will go on. With Cassio lately, and being troubled with a raging tooth, I could not sleep. There are a kind of men so loose of soul that in their sleep will mutter their affairs. One of this kind is Cassio. In sleep, I heard him say, Sweet Desdemona, let us be wary. Let us hide our love. And then, sir, would he grip and wring my hand, cry out, sweet creature, and then kiss me hard as if he plucked up kisses by the roots that grew upon my lips, and then cry, cursed fate that gave thee to the moor. Monstrous. Monstrous. Tis a shrewd doubt, though it be but a dream. And this may help to thicken other proofs that do demonstrate thinly. I'll tear her to pieces. Nay, but be wise, yet we see nothing done. She may be honest yet. Tell me but this. Have you not sometimes seen a handkerchief spotted with strawberries in your wife's hand? I gave her such a one. It was my first gift. I know not that. But such a handkerchief, I'm sure it was your wife's. Did I today see Cassio wipe his beard with? If be that. If be that, or any that was hers, it speaks against her with the other proofs. Now do I see tis true. Oh, blood, Iago. Blood. Then witness that here Iago does give up the execution of his wit, hands, heart, to wrong Othello's service. Let him command, and to obey shall be in me remorse what bloody business ever. I will upon the instant put you to it. Within these three days, let me hear you say that Cassio's not alive. My friend is dead. Tis done at your request. But let her live. Damn her! Lewd minx, damn her! Come, go with me apart. I will withdraw to furnish me with some swift means of death for the fair devil. Now... 
Art thou my lieutenant? I am your own. Forever. Autolite is bringing you Richard Widmark, Kathy Lewis, and Elliot Lewis in part two of William Shakespeare's Othello. Tonight's presentation in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Ah, many times the time, eh, Harlow? Yeah, the time to get an Autolite Stay Full battery, the perfectly performing, peerless producer of prompt propulsions that needs water only three times a year in normal car use. A pretty particular package, Harlow. Yes, Hap, and that personable, power-packed Paragon is persistently prepared to give quick-starting power every time. Fiberglass retaining mats protect every positive plate to reduce shedding and flaking and give the Autolite Stay Full battery longer life as proved by tests conducted according to accepted life cycle standards. And what's the name again, Harlow? Why, the Autolite Stay Full, the battery that says right on the case, needs water only three times a year in normal car use. Friends, to quickly locate your nearest Autolite battery dealer, just phone Western Union by number and ask for Operator 25. I'll gladly tell you his name and address. And remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage Richard Widmark, Kathy Lewis, and Elliot Lewis in the concluding act of Mr. Lewis's production of William Shakespeare's Othello, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Scene, Desdemona's bedchamber, early evening. Well, my good lady, how do you, Desdemona? Well, my good lord. Give me your hand. This hand is moist, my lady. It yet has felt no age, nor known no sorrow. Hot, hot, and moist. Here's a young and sweating devil here that commonly rebels. It is a good hand, a frank one. You may indeed say so, for t'was that hand that gave away my heart. A liberal hand. I cannot speak of this. Come, come, your promise. What promise, child? I have sent to bid Cassio come speak with you. I have a salt and sullen room offends me. Lend me thy handkerchief. Here, my lord. That which I gave you. I have it not about me. Not? No, faith, my lord. That's a fault. That handkerchief did an Egyptian to my mother give. She dying gave it me and bid me when my fate would have me wife to give it her. I did so. And take heed on it. Make it a darling like your precious eye. To lose or give it away was such perdition as nothing else could match. Faith is true. Most veritable, therefore, look to it well. Then would to God that I had never seen it. Ah, wherefore? Why do you speak so startling and rash? Is it lost? Is it gone? Speak, is it out of the way? Bless Say you? It is not lost, but what and if it were? (sighs) Ah! I say it is not lost. Fetch it. Let me see it. Why, so I can, sir, but I will not now. This is a trick to put me from my suit. I pray let Cassio be received again. Fetch me that handkerchief my mind misgives. I pray talk to me of Cassio. The handkerchief. A man that all his time has founded his good fortunes on your love, shared dangers. The handkerchief. Faith, you are to blame. Sounds! They that mean virtuously and yet do so, the devil their virtue tempts and they tempt heaven. So they do nothing. Tis a venial slip. But if I give my wife a handkerchief... What then? Why, then tis hers, my lord. And being hers, she may, I think, bestow it on any man. She is protectress of her honor, too. May she give that? Oh, tis foul in her. With mine, officer! That's fouler. Get me some poison, Iago. This night. I'll not expostulate with her, lest her body and beauty unprovide my mind again. This night, Iago. Do it not with poison. Strangle her in her bed. Good. Good. The justice of it pleases. Very good. And for Cassio. 
Let me be his undertaker. You shall hear more by midnight. Who's there? Othello? Hi, Desdemona. Will you come to bed, my lord? Have you prayed tonight, Desdemona? Aye, my lord. If you bethink yourself of any crime unreconciled as yet to heaven and grace, solicit for its strength. Alas, my lord, what may you mean by that? Well, do it and be brief. I will walk by. I would not kill thy unprepared spirit. Now, heaven forfend, I would not kill thy soul. Talk you of killing? Aye, I do. And heaven have mercy on me. Think on thy sins. They are loves I bear to you. And for that you die. That death's unnatural that kills for loving. What's the matter? That handkerchief which I so loved and gave you, you gave to Cassio. No! By my life and soul, send for the man and ask him... Sweet soul, take heed. Take heed of perjury or on your deathbed. Ah, but not yet to die. Yes, presently. Therefore confess you freely of your sin. You are to die. Lord, have mercy on me. I say amen. And have you mercy too. I never did offend you in my life. Never loved Cassio. Never gave him token. Oh, perjured woman. You stone my heart and make me call what I intend to do a murder, which I thought a sacrifice. I never gave it to him. Send for him hither. Let him confess the truth. He has confessed. What, my lord? That he has used thee. How? Unlawfully? I. He will not say so. No, his mouth has stopped. Honest Iago has taken order for it. I fear interprets then. What? Is he dead? Had all his hairs been lives, my great revenge had stomach for them all. Alas, he is betrayed and I undone. Oh, strumpet! Weep you for him to my face! Banish me, my lord, but kill me not. Kill me tomorrow. Let me live tonight. Nay, it is too late. Oh, Lord. Lord, Lord. The Lord, the Lord. What hope? My lord, my lord. Good, my lord, I would speak a word with you. Tis Amelia. Ah, no more moving. Still is the grave. My lord! If she come in, she'll sure speak to my wife. My wife. My wife. My wife. I have no wife. I don't speak to that I may speak with you, good, my lord. Soft by and by. Let me the curtains draw. What's the matter? Oh, my good lord. What now? Falsely. Falsely murder. Alas, what cry is that? That? What? What an alas it is. My lady's voice. Oh, help. Help. Oh, help. Oh, lady, speak again. Sweet Desdemona. Oh, sweet mistress, speak. A guiltless death. I die. Oh, who has done this deed? It was I that killed her. She was false as water. Thou as rash as fire to say that she was false. Oh, she was heavenly true. Your husband knew it all. My husband? Your husband. That she was false to wedlock? I with Cassio. If he say so, he lies to his heart. She was too fond of her most filthy bargain. Uh, help, 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 oh, help! The Moor has killed my mistress. Murder, murder! What is the matter? How now, General? Oh, you come, Iago. You have done well that men must lay their murders on your neck. What is the matter? Disprove this villain if you are a man. He says you told him that his wife was false. I told him what I thought and told no more than what he found himself was apt and true. But did you ever tell him she was false? I did. You told a lie. An odious, damned lie. She fought with Cassio? Iago knows that she with Cassio is the act of shame a thousand times committed. And she did gratify his amorous works with the recognizance and pledge of love which I first gave her. It was a handkerchief. Oh, thou dull moor. The handkerchief you speak on, I found by fortune and did give my husband... For often, with a solemn earnestness, more than indeed belonged to such a trifle, he begged of me to steal it. Villainous! She gave it, Cassio! No, alas, 
I found it and I did gift my husband. Filth, you lie! Are there no stones in heaven but what serve for the thunder? Precious villain! Bring his sword from him! I bleed, sir, but not killed. I am not sorry, neither. I'd have thee live. For in my sense, tis happiness to die. Othello, you must forsake this room and go with us. Your power and your command is taken off. You shall close prisoner rest till that the nature of your fault be known to the Venetian state. Come, bring him away. Soft, you. A word or two. I have done the state some service and they know it. No more of that. I pray you, in your letters, when you shall these unlucky deeds relate, speak of them as they are. Nothing extenuate, nor set down aught in malice. Then must you speak of one that loved not wisely, but too well. Of one not easily jealous, but being wrought, perplexed in the extreme. Of one whose hand, like the base Indian, threw a pearl away, richer than all his tribe. I kissed thee ere I killed thee. No way but this, killing myself to die upon a kiss. <laughs> oh, look on the tragic lodging of this bed. This is thy work, Iago. The object poisoned sight, let it be hid. Myself will straight aboard and to the state this heavy act with heavy heart relate. Suspense. Presented by Autolite. Tonight's stars, Richard Widmark, Kathy Lewis, and Elliot Lewis. This is Harlow Wilcox speaking for Autolite, world's largest independent manufacturer of automotive electrical equipment. Autolite is proud to serve the greatest names in the industry. They are members of the Autolite family, as well as are the 98,000 Autolite distributors and dealers in the United States and thousands more in Canada and throughout the world. Our family also includes the nearly 30,000 men and women in 28 great Autolite plants from coast to coast and Autolite plants in many foreign countries, as well as the 18,000 people who have invested a portion of their savings in Autolite. Every Autolite product is backed by constant research and precision built to the highest standards of quality and performance. So remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. <laughs> Next week, a story based on fact. The true report of a man who lost a jar which contained the destruction of a city. It is called A Vial of Death, and it will star Mr. Lloyd Nolan. That's next week on Suspense. The Abridged Othello was adapted for Suspense by Anthony Ellis and Elliot Lewis. The program was transcribed and directed by Mr. Lewis, with music arranged by Lucian Marwick from themes by Giuseppe Verdi. The orchestra was conducted by Lud Gluskin. Featured in tonight's cast were Joseph Kearns as Cassio, William Conrad as Montano, and Irene Tedro as Amelia. Your narrator is Larry Thor. Richard Widmark may soon be seen in the 20th Century Fox picture, Pick Up on South Street. And remember next week, Mr. Lloyd Nolan in A Vial of Death. Buy Autolite Stayful Batteries, Autolite Resistor or Standard Type Spark Plugs, and Autolite Electrical Parts at your neighborhood Autolite dealers. Switch to Autolite. Good night. This is the CBS Radio Network.